So now that we have our basic proximity check range finder uh, for our enemy AI, the next thing that we're going to do is focus on angle of view um, or field of view. And so we're going to create another object. Um, and this object's going to uh, be part of the uh, a child of the enemy AI. And uh, it'll contain its own state machine. Um, again, so we can kind of break out this logic. And again, I'm just going to wireframe this, kind of break this out. I'm going to right click on the uh, enemy with AI and I'll create a new cube object. And this cube, this is going to represent our field of view. Um, we're we're going to focus on uh, the angle uh, of the view and then determine whether or not we're inside an appropriate uh, angle of view. And, we, and this will be you know something that we can set um, it could be based on the weapon that the en enemy has or the disposition, how, how you want the enemy to respond based on its behavior. Um, so we'll try to make this as scalable as possible, but I'm going to call this object the field of view object. And it's going to contain the logic, um, but it's also going to perform um, uh, the, the basic action that gets the angle. And so I'm just going to lift this up a little bit um, in just to kind of you know visually separate it from the rest of the environment um i'm going to scale this down a little bit so it's not so huge so i'm gonna scale it down to about a quarter and again this um you know most appropriately would be a, an empty game object or, or or something that you know um just contains the logic we could combine this state machine to uh, other game objects, but again, I want to really kind of keep this separate so we can troubleshoot independently. Um, I'll jump into materials and I'll just throw um, some kind of simple material on this just to provide a little bit of contrast. And this, th there's a couple of different methods that we could do. We could, um, you know, have this thing look at the player constantly, um, depending on the actions that we want to use and we can calculate the our, our angles but i'm going to keep this as simple as possible so i have the field of view selected i'm going to right click and create a state machine uh, for now i'm going to call state one idle um, and we're going to get angle to target so this can be found in the transform uh, category inside playmaker so get angle to target uh, we'll load that into our idle state um, so we're going to use the we're going to use the owner now. It's important that the 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 Z direction, the blue arrow, is pointing. Um, this is the forward direction, and this will be used to calculate the angle. Um, our target right now. We're going to hardwire our player object as the target. But again, this could be something that's dynamic. If there's multiple players, or you want this enemy to respond to other enemies based on conditions, this is something that we could establish. Um, you know, multiple targets or prioritize targets. Uh, we're going to let the target position, we're going to let that default, we'll ignore the height for now, and then we're going to store our angle. Oops. So I'm going to create a new variable, this will be a float variable, um, and this is our, um, our, our, really our, our field of view or, or um, the result, uh, it's our angle to target. So I'll just say, um, let's just call it angle. To target or angle the player in this case but we'll leave it target because the, our target might change it might not always be the player uh, and we're going to calculate this every frame um, so let's test this and see what kind of result we get from storing uh, this angle but the play button once again i'm going to lock uh, the playmaker editor window and i'm focusing on this debug field if again if you're not getting this value popping out in store angle just make sure that you flip on your debug uh, check mark and that'll give you uh, the result in real time of what that data is. So I'm going to select the player. I'm just going to slide this thing around and you can see that the way that um, the angle is stored is it's using an absolute value based on uh, we're about you know 60 degrees out from from the center. Now we're about 90 degrees out so we can get a sense again the forward direction. Um, it's one of the reasons I've included uh, on my enemy AI, let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this icon here for a moment. There we go. Um, it's one of the reasons that I've included that forward-facing uh, uh, cube on the player, so we get a sense, so we remember which direction we're pointing in. I'll select the player. Um, so right now, our our angle is just a couple of degrees. 
Um, so what we'll do is we'll measure and determine what our, our field of view or our cone of vision should be. Uh, and then we'll, we'll make some um, conditions based on this. So I'm gonna toggle the play button and I'll go back into um, my field of view. This is the thing that contains my state machine. Now, I gotta make sure that I'm updating the name of my FSMs. And so I'm gonna call this field of view. This is FSM field of view. I like to keep FSM on the front end for the naming convention, just in case we get disoriented as we're um, kind of navigating through these menus. Uh, it'll just remind us that we're looking at the actual state machine. So on this field of view game object, we're just simply doing a get angle to target. We're targeting the player. We've named our FSM field of view. Uh, and now what we'll do is we'll do um, a real simple float compare and we'll pass back and forth between two states. These two states are both gonna be calculating or, or collecting uh, the angle to target, um, but we're just gonna determine one's gonna be uh, within the angle of view or the field of view and one's gonna be out of the field of view. So I'm gonna select this state, copy and paste. Uh, playmaker saying, do we want to replace the start state? No, we don't. Um, so I now have two idle states and I did that just so that I didn't have to rebuild this get angle uh, to target and, and load this information in. Um, so we'll assume that our first state is out of uh, field of view or FOV. So we'll do out of FOV and idle two will change over to in field of view. Okay, so out of FOV, I like to use these, I like to mark the states with a color. Um, so we have red indicating that we're out of the field of view, and we'll do green for in field of view. And so out of field of view, we'll assume that we're starting, and so our transition will be that if it falls within the field of view. Now the result that we're getting for store angle um, is between zero and our maximum angle that we want to accommodate. And so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a float compare and the float compare, uh, we're gonna take our, our collected angle to target. So we'll take angle to target. So I'm just clicking on this little equal sign here and changing that to angle of target. So if the angle of, of uh, to the target uh, we'll compare that against a float value. We'll hardwire this value right now. And we'll say um, that our angle of view that we want to accommodate, let's say is like 45 degrees. Okay, so we'll just key this value in. Um, so if we're currently out of our view and we're at 45 degrees or less than, so we're between... Um, uh, if we're between 45 and zero, so we're less than 45, uh, we'll create a new event and we'll say in view. We'll right click and add the in view and pass it over. Um, a lot of times when I do a little loop here, um, we'll just, you know, I like to do a really simple transition event like a next or a switch event. Uh, but in, the ca in this case, because we're explaining through the logic, I'm going to do something that's very obvious um, so that we can really kind of verbally walk through and kind of debug this logic. So we're doing a float compare. We're taking the value of our angle to target. And if we're less than or equal to, we also want to do equal to 45, um, we'll say that we're in view. So we'll transition to the in view. And we'll do that every frame. We'll jump over to in view. We'll do another float compare and we'll take that same variable of angle to target. We'll do our same uh, field of view. So how wide we want our field of view to be. So we're currently considered in our field of view. And so if we fall out of, so if, if we end up greater than 45, so remember the way that this works is that the further our player gets away from the Z direction of our enemy, the greater the angle of view is gonna be. So in this case, if we're in the field of view, it means that we're equal to or less than 45. So when we're in the field of view, um, we're gonna test 
uh, against 45, but if we're greater than, we're gonna create a new event. And we'll say we're out of view. To test this every frame, we'll right click and add the transition out of view and pass this back. Okay, so I'll hit the play button and we'll test this. So currently we're inside the field of view with the player because we fall within, um, uh, we're less than what we've established as uh, our field of view degrees. So in this case, 45, I'm gonna lock this so we can continue to debug this in play mode. I'll grab the player. And if this is set up right, once we get beyond 45 degrees, we're gonna fall out of the field of view. Okay, so our field of view is working. We're either in the field of view, so we're within 45 degrees, or we're outside the field of view. Okay, and that 45 degrees, that's something that we can change. Um, and in fact, this is something that um, we'd probably wanna set up in a variable rather than hardwired it, particularly when we're passing back and forth between two states that uses the same value. Um, simply for a workflow, it would make sense to do this. Um, so. Let's, let's do this. Um, what we'll do is rather than saying a hard value of 45, let's flip this to a variable. Uh, we'll create a new variable and we'll call this FOV. So this is the, the field of view or enemy FOV. So this is the field of view um, that the enemy uses to determine whether it's in view. So now we're using a variable um, that variable by default is set to zero, which is not a great practice. Um, so we'll change that here in a moment, but I'm gonna set this enemy field of view. Uh, so they're both using enemy field of view. Now we could go into our variables, choose our enemy field of view and change our default value to whatever we want our uh, field of view to be. And we should get the same results because I'm typing 45. We're still locked here on the state machine. And so um, we can pass this around. I'll go back to the state so we can see this. So we can see now that we just have a fixed value for float two, um, but it's a variable, okay? So instead of jumping into two different states to change that, I'll just jump over to the variable, select it and modify it here. Or more appropriately, what we might do is add a state. I'll call this init or initialization. We'll add a finished event and wire this over to our out of field of view and in field of view. And this initialization, we'll right click and use this as the start state. And now in our initialization, we'll set a float value. And the float value that we're gonna set is the enemy FOV. And this time around, I'll set this to 35. We only wanna do it one frame. So we just need to establish that field of view. So it's default, it's starting was 35, but we're gonna change it when we pass through the init state uh, so now we'll hit the play button and we should find that our field of view has changed to 35. So our criteria has changed a little bit um, because we have it in a variable. Uh, we'll just initialize it here and pass it, pass it through. And then this is something that could change and it could change based on maybe the weapon uh, that the enemy is using or maybe the behavior uh, that, or its disposition um, that the more it becomes aware of the player or the closer you get, maybe the wild, the wider the field of view could be. Um, so just a couple of things to, to think about here. But right now, um, we have these subordinate game objects, these children of enemy with AI, and we're, we're doing some basic range finding in one state machine. We're doing a field of view uh, in our second game object, our second state machine. And next, what we're gonna do is we'll determine line of sight. Uh, again, we'll do this in another game object that's a child of our enemy AI, use another state machine, um, and very similar to our field of view, we'll determine, uh, we'll switch back and forth as to whether we have line of sight or we don't have line of sight. Once we get that established, uh, we'll pass uh, this criteria. We'll, we'll, we'll determine whether we have uh, We'll pass the range information and the field of view and the line of sight information. We'll pass that up to our enemy AI and manage it uh, at this enemy AI manager level where we can build out um, our basic navigation strategies uh, and our basic uh, behavior trees. So we'll do that. We'll take a look at line of sight in the next presentation.